Have you ever noticed that the top thought leaders out there are also the ones who are creating books, content, and messaging, speeches, and talks that cause you to automatically think, wow, that is great. Wow, that is mind-blowing. Wow, I never thought about it that way. And the key word there is automatically. They create content, books, and messaging that automatically allows you to think those things. You don't have to think about it. You don't logically think about doing it. You automatically do that. Why? How are they doing that? Well, that's exactly what I'm breaking down in today's episode. So if that's interesting to you, well, keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you're about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready, because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. This episode is a continuation of last week's episode. So last week, we talked about evolution and we talked about mastery. The thing I talked about with mastery was that um, mastery allows you to go deeper on certain things than anyone else can. It allows you to discover things that other people haven't discovered yet, which allows you to teach things that other people haven't taught yet. I'm able to create the things that I create when it comes to messaging because my level of awareness of messaging is just, it's just continues to get higher and higher and higher. The foundation of which, where I create from keeps getting bigger and, and bigger and bigger. It's kind of like I said with the whole Netflix um, example is you can't see step five until you're on step four and you can't see step four until you're on three and you can't see three until you're on two and you can't see two until you're on step one. And so you have to let the process of evolution take place and evolution will bring you from step one, two, three, and four. But at every step, you need a mastery of that step in order to get to the next one. And because I have a certain level of mastery over my craft, which is messaging, I'm able to communicate things that people haven't heard before. I'm able to create things that people haven't heard before or seen before. I'm also able to speak to my audience on a different level than, than anyone else can because I have that mastery. I just understand what they're going through and how to get out of it so deep, so much deeper than, than everyone else. And I gave that example in the last episode is if you were at the bottom of um, a hole, like you fell down this hole or this cave and there's two people that appeared to, you know, help you out of that hole. Person number one just said, Hey, climb up um, as best you can try to use your arms, uh, you know, or sorry, use your legs instead of your arms. So you don't tire out your arms. There's going to be a couple spots where it's a little bit Sandy, but like, I believe in you and I know you can do it. Or person number two says, Hey, I want you to walk over uh, to the north side of the, 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 the cave, put your left hand on the U-shaped rock and your right foot on the, the rock that's coming out about three inches and use your leg and pull yourself up. Then you're going to scoot about five feet to the right and you're going to find a root. You're going to swing on that root over to this new area. There's a little bit of a ledge and then and climb up about five feet and then the wall is going to turn a little sandy, but that's great because you can dig holes uh, into the wall and then use those as steps to pull yourself out. Like, who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to the person, probably number two, right? Like the person who really described way more specifically what you need to do. And the only way, the only reason that person can speak to those levels is because they have mastery. And, and to me, mastery is, is understanding a solution better than everyone else. And you don't know the solution better than everyone else because you figured it out once. It's because you've done it over and over and over and over again. And maybe you've done it multiple ways. That's mastery. When we have mastery, it allows us to do something that other people can't do, which is getting specific. And that's what this episode is all about, is talking about how to get specific. Now, one of the reasons why we want to get specific is because it allows us to communicate to our audience's subconscious. 
So I'll try to break this down as simply as I can. When you communicate to your audience's subconscious, you're communicating at a level that doesn't require them to logically think. So it's been scientifically proven that a average human makes around 35,000 decisions a day. 35,000 decisions. Everything from should I move my hand right now to not? Should I drive or not? Should I brush my teeth now or not? What should I wear? Just like so many things. Um, even like what to think. Something happens and we have an automated response because our subconscious tells us that's how you should react. So you automatically react. If our subconscious wasn't there, the event would happen and then we would have to logically think, how do I want to respond? But if we did that every single day of every single minute, we'd be so consumed with making decisions, we'd have no more energy because it takes glucose to, to, in order to make those decisions. So to save energy, to save glucose, our subconscious mind automates things for us. And what happens is if we make the same decision multiple times, it'll automate it. If we hear the same thing multiple times, the subconscious will automate it. Even if we don't think it's true, it will automate it. We start to believe it. Um, and this goes on every single day. And this also goes on with your audience. Your audience will automatically start to automate things. And one of the things that will get automated is information. It's content. It's things that we consume. So when you read a book and it's really good and it's really perspective shifting and you're like, oh my God, this is mind blowing. You didn't have to think about whether or not it was mind blowing. There is an automated emotional response that was created when you read that book that caused you to automatically believe this is really good. You didn't have to think about whether or not it was good. It automatically happened for you. When you watch a really good movie, half the time you don't really realize that the, you know, if they did a good job, uh, got this from James Cooper, who was on our podcast, but he said, a good movie, when you're watching a good movie, you shouldn't realize that the music started playing or you shouldn't realize like there's something weird with the actor or it should be very seamless and you should be very into the movie. Your subconscious doesn't have to think about it. So if we're consuming books that way, we're consuming best-selling books that way, we're watching movies that way, and I'm, I would imagine there's a lot of content you've seen online where you're like, damn, that's, like, that's really good. I never thought of that before. I really like that person. And again, you didn't logically think about it. You didn't sit down and go, is this good? What makes this good? Do I like this person? Why do I like this person? It was an automated feeling of this was good. You yourself, you're probably listening to this podcast and you're probably entertained. You're probably learning. You're probably making realizations you haven't realized before. And you're probably like, if you're an avid listener, I would imagine you've probably had moments throughout the history of listening to our podcast that you're like, "Geez, that's really good. Oh, I never thought of that before. That's mind blowing. And you didn't have to think about, do how do I want to respond? You just responded. So you yourself have experienced your subconscious automatically telling you how to feel and what to think. Now, if you know that's happening, which you are now aware of that because I just broke it down for you, why are we not creating content the same way? Why have you not created content in the way that allows your audience's subconscious to go, wow, that is good. Oh my gosh, I need this. I need this now. I like this person. This is what I call subconscious connection or relatability. I want people that watch your content to have a subconscious connection, realization, or relatability to you. And getting specific is one way to do that. I'm going to give you some examples in this episode of how you can start to do that. So to break this down to show you how this works is subconscious connection, relatability, uh, subconscious connection and subconscious um, relatability happens when you get as close as you can to describing thoughts, feelings, actions, solutions, mistakes, and pain. And most people don't do this because most people stay very generalized. Let me give you an example. Most people might say something like, do you feel overwhelmed? And it's like, yeah, everyone and their mom feels overwhelmed at some point, but that's not specific. It's too general. Like, what do you mean overwhelmed? You mean overwhelmed in the sense of I have three kids and I run a business and I feel very busy day to day? Or are you saying overwhelmed because I have a lot of bills to pay? Are you saying overwhelmed um, because, you know, like, um, 
I'm moving out of state and I just have a lot of things to do. Like, what do you mean overwhelmed? When you're generalized, you leave so much room for your audience's subconscious to interpret that any way that they want, and they will. But when you get specific, people, and you get very specific, what starts to happen, and you start to describe people exactly what they're thinking, exactly what they're feeling, exactly what they're doing, exactly what they're doing to try to fix a problem, you describe that so accurately, what their subconscious does is sends alarm bells, oh my gosh, hey, they're talking about you. That's you. Pay attention to what they're saying. That's a subconscious thing that will happen inside of them. Then when you start describing the solution in so many details, the subconscious goes, they know what they're talking about. Pay attention to what they're talking about. The only way to get that detailed is because you've done it over and over and over again. So the only way to get as close as you can to their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, their solutions, mistakes, and pain is through experience. Experience will allow you to communicate pain and mistakes very well. Pain, mistakes, and thoughts very well. Experience guarantees that you will understand mistakes, you will understand pain points, you will understand suffering, but experience doesn't guarantee that you're going to understand the solution and we need to understand both. Mastery is what allows you to understand the solution better than everyone else. So when I tell you that you need to get specific and you need to describe their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, solutions, mistakes, pains, better than everyone else, that means you need both mastery and experience. So the question is, is well, how do we start to get that? So I'm going to give you my three-step philosophy um, of mastery. And then what we're going to do is give you some examples of how to get really specific inside of your content. So there was a book um, from... Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, where he has this 10,000 hour theory. And just disclaimer, I didn't actually, I didn't read the book. Uh, my father-in-law did, and he was telling me about it. And what I gathered from him is, is M Malcolm has this 10,000 hour theory saying that it takes around 10,000 hours to really uh, master a craft, uh, to really understand it, to be the best at it. And he was saying that like some of the top, top hockey players were born between certain months of the year because the way the schedule always worked out of like when they can play and what age they were in the groups and the leagues and stuff like that, it worked out that they would have more playing time over the, their lifespan than everyone else. They had more hours of their craft, which allowed them to be better at it than, than everyone else. Uh, then when you look at Wayne Gretzky and some of the top hockey players, it was true. That's when they were, they were born. He talked about Bill Gates. He, he had this, whoops, had this theory that Bill Gates um, wasn't necessarily, he could have been, but wasn't necessarily a better coder than everyone else and programmer. Um, he just had access to those types of computers before everyone else, meaning he had more hours to put in than everyone else. Therefore, he became a better master of his craft. I believe we need more than that. I believe that you can have more experience, more work, more 10,000 hours put into a certain craft than everyone else, but it doesn't mean you're going to be better than someone. It doesn't mean you're going to have a deeper level of mastery than they are. You're still going to need to put in the work because in order to have mastery, you need consistency, repetition, and dedication. But I believe there also needs to be natural ability. So I believe that you need to have those 10,000 hours in something that you are passionate about. Um, you need to be in your dharma. You need to be in your purpose. You need to be in alignment. This needs to be an industry or field or a niche that you're not doing just because you've done it your entire life. You literally see things inside of that space that others can't see. And we just had our video Forex event a uh, week, couple weeks ago. And my wife came on as our event planner. And she's been dabbling in event planning her entire, well, not entire life, but probably the last like 15 years. Wanted to be an event planner before we had kids and just really just had an eye for it. When we have birthday parties for the kids, I mean, she goes all out. She's like, I mean, they are themed birthday parties that you would see like in a magazine. That They are so beautiful and so nice. And she was the event planner for our last event and she was seeing things that other people couldn't see. You know, she was setting up crystals in certain ways. She was had uh, like mints and um, different like 
dental floss and stuff set up inside of like the bathrooms, like just little tiny things that most people wouldn't see. She just has an ability to see things when, when planning events that others can't see. So we need the 10,000 hour theory. We need to put in the work and put in a lot of hours to master a craft, but it should be something that you have a natural ability in too. So for me, for example, um, I, I'm not a great soccer player. I was the kid who was sitting in the field picking flowers. Like literally my parents would be screaming at me. The ball would go flying past me. People would be running past me. And I was like picking flowers in, in, the, uh, in the field. I can put in 10,000 hours and I will be a better soccer player. But if there was someone who had a natural ability, could see the field differently than me, could anticipate where players are going to go, they could just see the game differently than I could. And we both put in our 10,000 hours. That's just their purpose, their dharma, what they're aligned with, what they're just naturally good at. They're going to have a deeper level of mastery than, than I am. They just will. And it's the same thing with you. So I, I believe if we want mastery, it's, it's more than just putting in the work. It's also focusing on what you want to do, who you are, shedding the external world. Stop doing the things that people told you to do or what you think you should do or doing it because you have a degree and just do what you effing want to do. Say what you want to say. Say And what you're naturally good at, that's where we want to have you. But I also believe that those two things combined aren't enough. I don't, I don't believe that. And, and but again, all of this, all of these things that I'm, I'm telling you come from experience of after working with over a thousand students with their messaging is that there's something else that needs to happen. And so there's the 10,000 hour theory, which is pillar number one. And that is con- basically consistency, repetition, and dedication not like moving your path to something else and pivoting all the time and giving up and restarting, but being dedicated. Number two, natural ability. So something that is your dharma, your purpose, alignment, something that you see better than everyone else. It's your zone of genius. But number three is you also have to have a focus of what I call improving change. This means that you you break out of regurgitation. You're no longer saying things that other people have said. You're no longer taking other experts or colleagues' information and just regurgitating it all the time. Like there will be some level of regurgitation like because you're going to build off of each other. But you go from like 70% or more of your content being regurgitated stuff you've heard from other people to it being like 30 to 20%, which means that you have a lot more of original content. Kind of like Netflix originals. You have like Brandon Lucero originals or who, you know, whatever it is you are or do originals. And that's what I look at. Like a perfect example is thought reversals. Thought reversals were something that I created. This was new. I created an improving change inside of my space. I, this is where discovery lies. This is where better or new comes into place. When you look at NLP, NLP was created by someone. They looked at the space of communication and psychology and they created their own philosophy called NLP. Um, Hero's journey. Someone else looked at the space and looked for improving change. Here's a philosophy. Here's a process of how every movie and story could be told in a really effective way. Hero's journey. So when you have all three combined together, you generally start to form what I call new generation mastery. It allows you to get very specific. It allows you to create new and revolutionary philosophies. You start to hear people refer to what you do as your work. And it gets people, people results that they can't get anywhere else. When you have mastery, you're able to help people on deeper levels. You're able to bring them results that they couldn't and can't get anywhere else because you understand this on a deeper level than everyone else. And I'm willing to bet right now that if you're having trouble getting specific, and when I say generalized, uh, or when I mention generalized, you're probably staying very generalized because it's a lack of mastery, new generation mastery, um, and you're not able to get specific. So let's break down what might be going on. Um, some people might have a lot of hours put in. So the 10,000 hour theory, you're consistent, you're rep- you know, you're repeating a lot, you have dedication and you're looking for improving change. You just, but you're doing it in a space that you just don't have natural ability in. Look, you're going to be fine. You could be good. You could be an expert. You have a lot of knowledge and new ideas, but you're really more of a researching expert than you are a thought leader, which is fine. You can still build a business off of that. 
But if you're just looking for change and you're putting in the work, again, you're more of a researching expert. You're basing a lot of your content off of other people's work, other people's research. Um, it's a, built off a lot of a big percentage of what has already been created. Now, if we look at natural ability and improving change, like you just go like, wow, I, this is my zone of genius and I'm going to look at how to improve my space. But you're kind of lazy. Like you're not putting in more work than everyone else. You're not putting in the hours. You're not trying to figure out different solutions. You're going to get by and do well. You're going to start off great, but you're likely going to get very comfortable with the very fast growth that you're going to experience. And then that growth is going to plateau. And you've likely had the same program or the same philosophies, or you've been saying the same thing for one or two years, but that will eventually plateau at some point. And that you, you're more of like a plateaued expert when you have the work. So you have the 10,000 hour theory and a natural ability, you're what, but you're missing that improving change aspect. You are what I would call a natural expert. You're not really creating anything revolutionary or game changing, but you're just putting in the work. You're able to teach it very well and you just don't have to try very hard to see those results. When you have all three together, you have that new generation mastery. You're creating new things inside of your space. You're communicating at levels that are so specific. People subconscious automatically goes, yeah, that's me. Um, and you're not the researching expert. You're not the plateaued expert. You're not the natural expert. You are the master. You're the, you have new generation mastery. And when you have that mastery, it allows you to communicate more specifically than everyone else. And there's a couple of people that I, I've been watching for a while that I think are really good at this, which one is the holistic psychologist. Uh, so Dr. Nicole, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. It starts with a P, last name. Um, I think it's Pereira or something like that or Pereira or something. I don't know. But anyways, the holistic psychologist is, is her handle on, on Instagram. And her content is very good about getting specific. And what happens is when you get very specific on things, it causes your audience's subconscious to start firing, that is me. And there are three tools that we, I reveal to the, to the um, Video 4X students. I'm actually gonna give you one of those tools today, which is self-identifying messaging. When we are able to get very specific, um, again, like I just said, it allows the subconscious to fire but what it also does is it allows the audience to self-identify. And there's this term we're starting to use in our new program called self-identifying messaging, where when your audience automatically reads what you're doing or consumes your video or consumes your podcast, what their subconscious does is it automatically identifies. So it automatically categorizes themselves. It automatically takes on an identity um, or it automatically labels them as something. So for example, um, the holistic psychologist had a post that was called how parenting styles affect us. And it was one of those swipers is like you swipe to the right and it was like six images or whatever. And it says it goes through all these different parenting styles. And I don't know if she made up these parenting styles or the, these are something someone else made up at some point, but um, you know, they were ab the absent parent, the extreme strict parent, the disassociated parent, the coddling parent, the pressure parent, the secure parent, and the abusive parent. And what she did on each slide, like let's just do the absent parent, for example, she described what an absent parent was. And she said absent parent was parents whose trauma make them unavail unavailable, both physically uh, and emotionally, and can evolve addiction. And then she describes the adult behavior that you would experience if you had an absent parent. As an adult, you might have chronic fear of abandonment, belief that you're not worthy of love, fear of commitment, easily falls into group think, deeply wants love, yet engages in coping me mechanisms that block love. Let's do a couple more. The extreme strict parenting. Parents who act as an authoritarian figure or disciplinarian instills fear in child from self or God figure monitors all aspects of child's life. The adult behavior, if that was your parent, you can become ideological or rebel against childhood environment, feel shame or, or for questioning beliefs or having their own needs or desires, fear of unknown situations or of the follow, of following intuition. Let's do one more. Disassociated parenting. Parents who are coping by numbing or leaving the body, 
not present, distracted, unable to help child through difficult emotions, unable to connect emotionally, the adult, adult behavior, avoidance of relationships or excessive neediness, might also cope by disassociation, trouble connecting with others, often feels misunderstood, unsure of own reality, fawns or appeases others. Now she goes on and there's, you know, there's like four or five more. But the point is, is that I want you to pick up on is what she's doing is getting very, very, very specific on here's the parenting style. Here's what they do very specifically, not generalized at all, but very specifically. And then what she does is says, here's what you will see in your life as your behaviors and your patterns because of that parenting style. Now, everything she does is accurate, accurate, accurate. Am I saying that correctly? Accurate, accurate and specific. It's accurately specific. And when you're that specific, what starts to happen is when you read those, your subconscious automatically goes, that is me. But the way the content is set up is it starts to, you start to self categorize yourself. I am the person with the extreme parent. I am the person with the disassociated parent. But the thing is, I want you to recognize is that doesn't happen because you've logically thought about it. It happens because your subconscious automatically did it for you. Your subconscious read it. And because it was so specific, your subconscious automatically categorized yourself into one thing. That is how powerful her content is because she's accurately specific, but she can only become accurately specific because she has a level of mastery because she has those three things that I talked about, a natural ability. She's in her purpose or her dharma. She puts in the work to work with students, to work with people. She's done the research. She's, she's done the education, but also the actual work. So she has the knowing she's worked with clients and stuff like that. And then also, uh, is focused on improving change. She's focused on new discoveries. How do I improve the space? What, is, what can I discover that hasn't been discovered yet? And so she starts to create content that gets people to subconsciously identify themselves as, categorize themselves, or label themselves. She's getting accurately specific. She can go deeper than anyone else. And that comes from mastery, involvement, and experience. I want you to start looking at how can I describe things, something so specifically that the subconscious says, that's me. You do not give the subconscious a chance to say, this is not me. When I say, are you overwhelmed? No one wants to admit they're overwhelmed. So the subconscious is automatically going to go, well, no, they're not referring to you. They're referring to somebody else. That's not you. When you say something like, are you overwhelmed? You're literally asking your audience the subconscious to admit that they have a problem. That's literally what you're trying to do. I'm sorry, guys, it doesn't work that way. They don't want to admit they have a problem. They want to stay safe. But when you describe something so accurately and so specifically, the subconscious is forced to say, that is me. And the biggest uh, objection that I get is that people tell me, well, Brandon, if I get so specific, I'm not going to be talking to everyone. Yeah, I know. That's exactly the point. And I'm going to give you guys an example here. Let's say you owned a restaurant in New York and this restaurant sold hot dogs, it sold hamburgers, it sold mac and cheese, uh, it sold salads, um, you know, just whatever, typical American food. And there was a rally or a protest going on and there was like thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the street right in front of your restaurant. But no one was coming in. Coming in. If you got on a megaphone and you said, hey, is your name Robert? If your name is Robert, pay attention. Every single Robert's going to turn around and pay attention because their subconscious goes, why are they talking to me? Why are they saying my name? I better listen. And then you said, if you are a Robert and you're a vegetarian, this message is for you. Well, a lot of the Roberts might turn around, but a lot of the Roberts that are vegetarians are going to still be listening to you. And then the final thing you said was, now, if you're a vegetarian and you like hot dogs and your name is Robert and you've never found a hot dog that a vegetarian could eat, I have something for you. I made a hot dog that's designed just for you. This is designed for people whose name is Robert, are vegetarians, and like hot dogs. If that's you, come on in. 
Now what's going to happen is you so specifically describe someone and their needs and what they want that they will likely, or the chances of them coming in are way more higher than if you just got on the megaphone and were like, come on in, we have hot dogs and hamburgers and blah, 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 blah. And what you're, and, and what I want you to realize is that when there's thousands and thousands of people getting specific will still allow you to fill your restaurant. Your restaurant can't fit a thousand people in it. You don't want a thousand people to fit into that restaurant. But what you're doing is communicating more intentionally and effectively because you are now speaking more specifically to people. And keep in mind, you still sold hot dogs, you still sold mac and cheese, you still sold hamburgers, you still sold mac and cheese, but you didn't talk about all of that stuff up front. You picked one specific thing to talk about and you brought people in. And that's what a sales funnel should do. That's what a training should do. That's what a webinar should do. You don't need to teach everything on a webinar. Teach one very specific thing that allows you to get very specific on the pain points, the problems, the thoughts, and the actions that they're actually doing. But here's the thing. You guys don't own a restaurant in New York, I'm assuming. You're probably not listening to my podcast trying to grow a restaurant in New York. You're probably trying to grow an online business. And when you have an online business, you're not dependent on just the people in front of your store. You literally have the world wide web. You have every single person on this planet, almost essentially, that you can talk to. So when you get specific and you're communicating to the entire world, you will always have enough people coming in into your audience. And when you can speak more specifically to them, they're going to be more connected. Their subconscious is going to fire a lot more. And you're going to start to create really effective marketing and really effective messaging. I want you to start thinking about how can you create content, whether it be in video form or Instagram or podcast, that gets people to automatically identify themselves subconsciously, categorize themselves subconsciously, or label themselves subconsciously. When you get so specific and you're accurate, what you're doing is you're tapping into your audience's subconscious to feel like you're describing them so they automatically feel like you understand them or to automatically feel like you're calling them out. But it really what it does is it makes it feel like you are individually talking to them. Basically, you don't give their subcon- their subconscious a chance to determine this isn't for me. So that term that I talked about, the self-identifying messaging, that's just one term. That's just one thing that we're working on. It's one thing that's going to be in our new program. We have more. That's just one right now that I'm giving to you guys right now that I want you to play around with is start to ask yourself, how can I create something that gets them to self-identify that is me or they're talking about me? Again, you need the mastery. You need the depth. You need to really actually understand who they are. And again, if you're not able to do that, I'm, I'm willing to bet it's because you are missing one or multiple of those pillars I talked about. That 10 hour, th- hour theory, 10,000 hour theory, which is consistency, repetition, dedication, putting in the work. Or it's number two, the natural ability. You're not focusing on something you have a natural ability at. You're not in your dharma. You're not in your purpose. You're not alignment. You're not doing something you can see better, differently than everyone else. You're not in your zone of genius, at least not enough, as much as you need to be. And then number three, you haven't really had a focus on improving change. You haven't been focusing on discovering something new or creating something better or breaking out of regurgitation. You've just been so focused on just teaching and educating. Let me give you more and more and more and let me help you without a focus on mastery. So what I'm going to leave you with today is to just focus on getting specific inside of your content and try to create content that gets people to self-identify, self-label or categorize themselves automatically and start speaking to their subconscious mind. So for those of you who found this podcast valuable, let me know by leaving us a review on iTunes. I'd be so grateful uh, for those reviews. Let me know what you like so I can do more of it. And uh, thank you for being a listener. I'll see you all on the next episode. Take care. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested. And thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.